last time on The Empire's Edge. Am I feeling like they want to like run into the area that they that they want to charge and he's holding them back or that they want to turn around? It's a cultural taboo uh, that this area is a place that our people don't belong. So not only can we not go around it, we have to do the exact opposite of go around it. It is saying that um, uh, this place is death. And I don't want to take the same route too many times for fear of making a, sm- a trail unintentionally. Okay. I know that I will one day fall and rot to the ground and they will only be thicker and stronger and more dense. We split into a bunch of raiding parties. We hit at a bunch of different points and everybody's helping each other by drawing forces to various sites and spreading them thin. As you're looking through this big gap in the trees, flying in toward the hill and actually flying in toward a rift easily, 60 feet long with a 90 foot wingspan. It circles for a moment and then drops down into the hill. It's got to be adult and it is a dragon. You just saw a dragon flying overhead. You just saw it go, it's like, like pull its wings in, although it probably wouldn't have had to and went right down into one of these, these With our extensive experience in fighting and combating dragons, can we, can we tell the uh, particular type? Do, do we, would we even have a, a bearing to they know colored? what? We are, yeah. Like color coded? Yeah. <laughs> but like, I, they're probably kind of a cloud color on the underside because stealth. We've only ever seen one type of dragon. What type was it? Greens. Green dragons. Is it a green dragon? Go ahead and roll perceptions. Unnatural 20. Very nice. Unnatural 18. Unnatural 26. Okay, so <laughs> it was very clear that as you guys, as this thing like turned and the light went in, you could tell that it was most definitely green and then disappeared into one of those spaces. Okay, so what do we okay. know about green dragons? That we have fought them before. Some itty bitty little ones. Do they shoot acid or? The ones we were fighting, I think were poison. So It was, it was a poison, kind of a cloud that it would. And I breathe. do not have protection from poison prepared. Crap. Okay, I wonder if I do. Maybe so we'll find out. How long are you pausing, or do you guys want to proceed like at all speed? I don't know. Zellen just had a conniption fit. I'd like to because figure I out why. have protection from poison prepared. Oh boy! Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, so first as, means of defense is don't get hit by it. Yeah. Step one: you will save more hit points by killing it quicker. So if it's a concentration spell, cast something else. <laughs> it is not a concentration spell. Oh well, and sweet, awesome. Yeah. Um, That's great. How long does it last once you do cast it? Okay, Rounds. so we do it. Yeah. How, how far are we from where it just flew in? Uh, you are still probably like a, a mile and a half from that area. You're not quite to where the, the growth got that dense. You were heading down into the bowl, and you're most of the way into it, not quite as far as uh, you and Zellen were yesterday, Jacob. Okay. Um, reasonably well, covered to get to that area or pretty much out in the open? Uh, reasonably covered. Okay. If, you, if you got off this stone slide... You'd be out from where the open spot well, was. Well, it sounds like it just dove into one yeah, of the rifts. Yeah, and it went into yeah, one, it of went into one of the rifts. It did. So let's get moving. Yeah, I th- I don't see any reason why we wouldn't want to just start walking forward. Okay, yes, it, run it, toward the dragon. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> that gosh. makes sense. Great, brilliant. Yeah I, yeah, I was making sure that like, if there's any way, I cannot pass my stealth ability onto you guys. I can move stealthily at normal pace mm-hmm. alone. But yeah, no, in my favorite terrain, we're just kind of walking. We won't get lost, and we can move at a reasonable rate, but we won't be stealthy about it. Got it. So it does sound like, and you are starting to hear some uh, yelling in the distance that there's been either encounter or people have been spotted that you can tell somewhere out in these woods that you know, things are happening. The skirmishing is starting. Oh, I forgot we were yeah. doing that. Yeah. Why did we have to get the side with the dragon on it during all these? I think well, everybody know, has the side with the yeah, dragon. Yeah, we don't know yeah. which hole it went in. It didn't, I don't think it went to the building. Um, it did not. It did not go right. into the so building. Right, so it didn't go that, into the hole that we're uh, walking towards. Or so are we close enough to a rift where we could start another skirmish over uh, here? Well, you well, are... We're, we're heading to the building. Oh. The ruins, because that's most likely oh, where, where the okay, thing so is. Okay, so where's the rift in comparison to the building we're heading to? Uh, it would be toys. way around to the right and further down the hill, like a lot oh, further down okay, the hill. Oh, okay, okay, cool. All right, and let's and just continue on And one of like five, right? Yeah, they said there was, there was four definites and there were, might have been a fifth one. Okay. I wonder if there's any advantage to fighting a dragon when it's under the ground as opposed to up in the air. I'd assume maneuverability, but let's get to it first. <laughs> so right. you guys aren't quite even to the area that was like the, the magical growth. You're still going through the last part of the normal growth forest. Right. But that wouldn't take you very long. And it'd be a matter if you went like at, a, at an accelerated speed, if like you feel a great, you know, compulsion to move while 
um, so if forces are being distracted or being drawn to an area. I think that'd be a good call. All right, so then you're, are you leaving behind those kind of like, are you moving faster, Jacob, leading them faster through this point? Yeah, uh, we'll just move at normal pace. Um, well, y yeah. Yeah, like a week. But, but we're hurrying. I mean, we're moving fast, That's what I mean. right? So like the, uh, the actual um, growth won't impede our travel. So because not, they're traveling with me. Not at this point, yeah. right? All right, so then you are moving faster. Um, and then you get to that demarcation point, and you can see that this will be a lot slower trying to get through all of this stuff because there's no apparent opening. Uh, Zellin, being up on it, looking at it, you would think that this could have very much the same kinds of effects as uh, your own, uh, was that thorn growth you did? That those uh, hill thorn. Uh, yeah, wall. went wall of thorns that the hill giants went through, that just pushing through this could be very bad. Yeah. Um, that, that might mean either skirting it to one direction or the other to try to find um, an opening because presumably uh, the XOA use, you know, they get up into here somehow. Yeah, I'd rather find an opening than just try and walk through the cheese grater. Yeah, I totally agree with that. The cheese grater. Yeah, the Cuisinart. The Boris grater. All right, so uh, which direction? Jacob, you take them to the right or you take them around to the left? You've heard more skirmishing sounds to the right, and the right is toward the side. Where, where the, the dragon was? The dragon went So into. left? <laughs> All right, so uh, heading toward the left. Let me see how far down you need to go. Uh, you travel um, a pretty good ways. You go around nearly a thousand feet around that side. Jeez. And it's getting quiet again up ahead of you. So it sounds like any kind of skirmishing sounds aren't taking place you know, in this direction where you finally do get into a gap into the thorns, through the thorns. So it must be a space where the um, uh, Ixoa come out or go in. Okay. Um, you guys ready? Is there any like, yeah. preparatory stuff we need to do um, before we... I think you're casting Boris goes first, but aside from that, <laughs> uh, how much of a spread do you guys have between you as you go like up into this? How much space is there for a spread? Uh, well, as far as a spread, yeah, it'd be like be linear distance that it is only about like you know five eight feet wide, something like that. So yeah, it's narrow, I think like five feet between us. Okay, and then as you go in, almost immediately, Boris, like you walk in about fifteen feet, uh, then you're turning right and it starts curving back around to the left. It is very. Uh, maze-like up inside here. Great. And this, the, the building is, or what is this? Not Th a this building. is the unnatural growth. Yeah. Oh. This is a path in the unnatural growth. Um, exactly so. Um, so Jacob, go and do a survival. Do my best. That's not nearly my best. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, even uh, though it's but probably still pretty good. Is it still my favorite terrain technically? Uh, yeah, technically it's still your favorite right. terrain. So 19. All right. Yeah, that's, that, that's plenty high enough. Uh, you are noting more signs of travel in here as though they're not really concerned about uh, hiding their campsites or, you know, being very secretive as they're moving. And it must also be just the number of those Ixoa feet that come walking through here. Uh, it looks very traveled, not like a deer trail, but it's just very traveled through here uh, and pretty manicured, pretty cleared among these you know, various trees and hedge, you know, thorns, all this stuff that's inside here. Uh, but you are being routed in a particular direction. And after it starts to bend to the left, uh, you have a choice. It's going in a couple of different directions at once. It becomes much more, again, maze-like. Is the undergrowth reacting to us at all? Is it shifting? Is it moving? Do we feel like like when we look behind us, are the paths we just trod still there? They're still there. Okay. And it's not trying to press in. It doesn't feel any more oppressive. No, it feels definitely oppressive. And right. there's probably some measure of that, too, that you're getting closer to where you know there is a really, really big and potentially old dragon that um, if the if the the trails are closing and back behind you, it must be happening mm, either very slowly or not at all because you're not seeing immediate um, you know signs of that pressing in around you. Uh, Jacob, go ahead and roll that as um, I'm trying to think of the, if if we can insight putting those things together. Is it like to the top capped? You know, the, the branches are growing over, so there's no access to like sunlight or can we still see sky? You can see sky through it, but it is to a, a large degree canopied over the top of you. I'm going to send Usud up and try and get at least an eye above to try and direct us a bit. Invisible or, or invisible. not invisible? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So um, goes up and above you and stays within easy that 100 foot range of yours uh, and is fairly certain it can map out how far you get to the top um, and go ahead and roll its uh, perception. Uh, 
Did you still want me to make a roll? You're like talking inside or putting something together. Um, yes, I was gonna say that was a, um, uh, I think the, the best way to do that would be, yeah, because it's not just your tracking. It's not just like that nature sense or it's not just perception. So it'd be more like an investigation as to which direction you think is going to take you most likely up to the top where if the manor is still there, if there are ruins, whatever that uh, is. Can I convince you to pick a survival or nature since those are actually good for me? No, <laughs> no be the other one. But, uh, 14 on a perception. Okay, so on um, Usud's uh, perception roll, and you're getting this through Usud right now, that she can also see yeah. where there seems to be encampments that are outside um, that look like they, they must be the Exoa encampments. But she, he, he, uh, he believes that he can find a route to get to the top without going toward that encampment. Like if wrong, you know, Good. for you guys, yeah. wrong decisions were made. And what'd you make, Jacob? Nine. Nine. Yeah. So um, there's not a lot. There's so much traffic through here that not one thing says that one to go to the top. It could bow back down again. Uh, but with a suit over your heads, it looks like um, he can guide you guys through this. So you're moving at a pretty good pace as long as you are making a point not to uh, like deviate or want to explore or examine things as you're going. We're going to destination. Yeah, no, we th we already have allies engaged in combat. We want to make sure we can go and get our skirmish started. All right. Then at a particular point when I guess like the sound would carry when you're about halfway up this hill, uh, which has taken you about uh, 15 minutes to get that far, you can tell there's definitely weapons crashing way around your right-hand side. Um, and it sounds like it's still probably outside of the actual unusual growth area, but probably really close to the edge of that too. So they're definitely being engaged. Okay. Uh, within about another you know, 12, 15 minutes, you find yourselves opening up to the very top of the hill, and you can see why other bugbears thought, or some of the bugbears thought this would have been maybe a ruin because the uh, the castle is, or the, the manor, is in a state where it's definitely no longer all standing. Uh, you come up through there, there's brush, there's vines through everything, and immediately closer to where you are, it seems as though the actual buildings have been like raised to the ground, like something you know, devastating, a siege or an earthquake or something has happened, uh, and that more of the manor is still standing, but a little further back from what once must have been its periphery. Let's keep moving. Yeah, I agree. All right, so moving through that outer area, go ahead. Do you and... see any more signs in this? Say, uh, until else? I see something that uh, like screams, they've been here within minutes. I I don't stop. Uh, you do see sign that says they've been here within minutes. So it sounds like uh, beings from right here were moving down by various paths, just not the one you guys came up through, uh, to get you know down into that maze and out to wherever this engagement's happening. Mo yeah, and so moving away from us probably to the other perfectly. skirmishes. So, yeah, working exactly as we want. So. Uh, continue on until, like I said, until there's something that looks like they're running the same path that we're on. I okay, guess. real perceptions. Sure. The oh my four god! Four for Boris and a ten for Usud. Twenty-three unnatural. Okay, and thirty-six. Yes. Nice. Oh. a natural twenty. I thought um, that was oh, yeah, oh my god, the <laughs> other way. Oh no, that was natural twenty in my favorite terrain. So yeah. When you get to like the actual edge of where the buildings must have first started, Jacob, and Zellen, you probably be noticing this too, but it is so clear to you, Jacob, that it doesn't look as though a wall was simply knocked over or that, you know, like, you know, siege weapons were battering it down or lightning destroyed it. And you've seen a lot of that kind of stuff in different places or that time has done it. It looks more like the way the mortar is so flat and the stones that are still the foundation are still so level and intact it looks more like somebody's been taking it apart stone by stone. Oh, that's I mean, wild. I made such a good perception check that I got, I actually dipped into siegecraft for a moment. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> you like... dipped into my stonework. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I have my rock knowledge thing that I didn't get to use, <laughs> and you used somehow. <laughs> so um, that's weird. So, so can we tell, like, when they're taking it apart, they're just taking it apart and dropping it on the ground? Or they're taking... Well, that's it, just it. There's, it no, like there's no stones around right here. So they're taking it apart so and dismantling it, it somewhere. Purpose. Yeah, so they maybe they're using it... Can we see, like, you know, the town of them in here, or...? Uh, from this side you're on right here, you don't see a particular town. It could be, like, further around to one yeah, edge. So maybe, like, into the hill or to a different location. You mean a... a, a um, a, what the are the Exoa. Things? The Exoa, an Exoa town? Yeah, because there's a bunch of them. They live somewhere. So they maybe are taking these stones to build up their own little homes. Potentially. Got yeah, it. that would seem reasonable. Um, and you're taking, I guess, then still, you can see it right over there, the portions of this manor, whatever the structure was, that still seems to be as though it's intact or, or more largely intact. Uh, as you're approaching it, 
it still stands a couple of stories tall, but you can tell that it was probably much, much taller than that, that it is being reduced and like the upper stories have already been removed from it. So it's a little bit like going into a construction site. You know, there's like the, the material An anti-backwards construction site. Right. Yeah, kind of. Um, and that it looks like, uh, it looks like if so we're, we're just here, that they've been in this area uh, and you approach what would be really a door into like a larger space that was some interior hall and uh, but there's there's nobody else around but already there's definitely the signs of living things that have been you know around here in this area that's weird if they're going to take these <clears throat> stones and move them someplace else why didn't why wouldn't they just shore this up and live here maybe a security thing preferences who yeah. could say but we need to keep moving yeah um like as long as we're being aware and being safe we need to keep moving yeah uh perception check do we hear any sounds of them nearby at the moment any or uh, sounds of anything because maybe there's something else in here which is why they don't want to live here um so roll that perception for uh, for listening that way nine only a 26 this and 11 oh, no <laughs> unnatural 20 yeah, I'll tell you, this blows the DCs out of the water again. Uh, no, it sounds like anybody that was out in these open areas or up on top um, in an exposed location has probably already moved further down the hillside into one of these other locations, or who knows? They could have what would be we're under attack, go to battle stations, and they've gone someplace else. Right. Uh, but it seems like, like heading out to meet the foe is a better thing for them to do than to wait around right here. Makes sense. So, I mean, do we just want to continue with our reconnaissance in further, or are we going to want to... We're breaching. We're we're moving in. All right, yeah. So, let's go in. You go into what would have been like a large gallery room, and uh, again, this is in still a two-story area, and you can see that a portion of this would be some of the peaked ceiling that goes up into that second story. So, right above the... the like, what would the, the ceiling be of this would be the exposed stone up on the very top. And you could tell this must have been a receiving area. It's about uh, 40 feet wide and about 80 feet long. You can see there's a very particular exit going you know, out of this room to the other end. Uh, a lot of rubble in here, a lot of digging tools, material, uh, stored things, stack things. Uh, it looks like it's used as some kind of a receiving chamber for both working and for the lives of these people. The most direct way back out is the one door that's directly across on the far side. Do do we have any sense of how old it is? Like in looking at a, around, do any of the, Let's do that, the construction uh, methods? That, that, that stonework. Interior here. design check. <laughs> do you want it as intelligence, wisdom, or charisma? Um, Because you never pinned down what the skill was. Uh, uh, plus six, plus seven, or plus eight to ask a different... I'll go with charisma. Nice. I'm charismatically convincing these rocks that these are from a certain time period. Apparently not. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, you really can't tell the exact age apart from just looking at how they are <laughs> that you would think it's very old. Um, but old, not the priority. Um, yeah, but, uh, go ahead and give me a, um, um, uh, the, uh, the siege craft one. That was very much so. You can tell these are the way they are because of the way they are. Uh, uh, 16. Yeah. Doing a comparative analysis. Uh, the place looks Kremlin to you. Okay. Yeah. yeah which we knew. Yeah, so that but that gives us kind of a timestamp. I I'm thinking about casting. I'm going to cast detect magic with my wand because I can do that and keep moving. It's not a concentration. I don't have to do. I can do it with my wand and just keep going. It, it, your your staff or the wand? The wand. The wand. Detect magic wand. Okay. It is it is a concentration, but it lasts for ten minutes, and I'll drop it if something. Not the wand, the spell. If something else comes up. Okay, and it's just an area around you. Is it like. 10 feet, 30, um, 30 feet, feet. 30, yeah, but 30. the duration I sense presence of magic within 30 feet. Okay, so apart from the pings that are coming from the guys right next to you, yeah. uh, you're getting nothing in this area within 30 feet of you, so that circle of it. So it looks like it's all mundane, you know, foodstuffs, gear, you know, rope and things, um, things like that as you move through. Are you just heading to the other door, Jacob? Yeah, straight across. All right, so um, let's see. Actually, yeah. um, <laughs> detect magic would be the only thing that would make me stop walking through here unless she goes, there's something really cool in that chest right there. Uh, assuming that doesn't happen. Door. Um, as you're moving forward, um, Jacob, you feel the need to stop everyone that uh, you have noticed uh, that in that doorway, uh, just a couple, maybe three inches off the ground, that there is a very thin wire that goes from one side of the inside, you know, the far side of that door to the other side of that door. Hmm. Um, that sounds like a trap. It looks like a trap. 
Um, yeah, can I, um, I, what was that? That's perception to see if I can figure out what it does. Uh, sure. Uh, wow. Uh, 27. So as you're like looking through that doorway and looking up around it and not triggering that, it looks an awful lot like the beams just inside, you know, the far side of this doorway have been wedged into place. Uh, and tripping that wire could pull one of those beams just enough uh, that it could bring the ceiling down in this area. Uh, does it seem like this was set up as like a as we're leaving kind of method, or is this like an, a permanent, just kind of, the door leads nowhere, this is just in case anyone comes through here and they think they're going to go further, they get trapped in this area. The hall turns to the left, and it looks as though that it, it continues and would connect to some place um, if you, you know, just avoided the trap or stepped yeah, over so it. Yeah, can, no, step, can we step over it? Um, yeah. yeah, you certainly could. Um, can you disarm? Let's it? disable it entirely, just uh, just in case, because if they think that we've gone through here, if they just pull this, we might get trapped wherever we are and be forced to go f further in. And I don't want it landing on us if we're trying to retreat. Yeah. All right. So you're taking out tools. Yes, thieves' tools. And what is the check? Is it just a straight up dexterity, or is it a? It's a dexterity check. Okay. Yeah. So you're adding your proficiency bonus as long as you're proficient with thieves' tools. That's uh, saving throw. Okay, dexterity plus. That. Oh, it's the same thing. All right. 29. You do. That uh, you manage to uh, tie off, rather, you know, wire off one portion of that trip wire uh, to a protrusion in the rock, um, and then you cut the wire, so it is still being held, and it's right there at the right-hand edge of the door. So unless somebody grabs one of those beams and pulls on it, you should be just fine. All right, cool. Morris, you want to make sure this is good? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> you go first. I, I check my own handiwork, and I go first. Well, no, no, I... I thought you meant like trying to like pull on another string or something. Oh. Yeah. I'm still keeping point because I've still got best armor class, best hit points. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, moving further through there, you actually are in a very narrow connecting hallway. And as you get to the far end of that hallway, you can see that there is a very low door from this side or doorway off to the left hand side of this short hallway uh, that is heading back in the direction of the room, the big gallery room you came through initially. Like an Ixoa-sized doorway? Like maybe they made the doorway for them? Very much so. Got yeah, it. Very much so. Um, and it looks like this area that would have come down, uh, had it come down, it wouldn't have in any way affected the room just prior to it and potentially not the rooms beyond that. So it does imply that they have a pretty good sense of like stone working, manipulating stone, you know, holding things in place that, um, that they could trap an area uh, and not worry about devastating their own spaces and, and living areas. Interesting. Worth worth noting. So the only doorway is an Exoa sized doorway. That goes back. So um, do an investigation. All of us, I guess, she vocalize that out loud, or yeah, that's fine. If she's going to say it out loud, all yeah. The time. Talks with her hands too. Thirteen. Unnatural twenty. Nice. Uh, twenty-one. Yeah, the, you, know, you probably <laughs> you're probably all saying it about the same time. That I'll bet you that door goes back to that gallery room, and it's behind some boxes and stack stuff that they can either avoid it or if it collapses, they still have a way to get through right there. Got it. So which directions do we have to move? Just um, further into the hallway? You'd be further down this hallway. It looks like it's going into another like gallery room, an interior room. Who knows what it might have been for. Keep moving. But as you step toward the doorway into that one and looking in, you can see that it was a narrower hallway, you know, whatever its function. And there's it actually the remains of what might have been tapestries, could have been pictures um, not a priority. Are, We've got a dragon to fight. Let's keep moving. I don't know. Walls. I'm wondering if these tap, like if the, the tappers you've seen, like knowing them, they might have like secret doors behind them or secret tunnelways, passageways. Knowing now that they have the thought to trap doors, would they have secret ways of getting around here? Uh, it's definitely a um, like it stuffs in shreds. It is oh. like there's like individual like you know a big rectangle hmm. square. Can, can you see any paths? Can anymore. you see any paths in the dirt or the dust? Can you see that anything walked up to any of these tapestries? Uh, go ahead and roll that as you're um, tracking. Uh, I hate so much. Twenty two. There we go. Um, yes. Mental math is hard. Man. Actually, there is a very very specific path that goes through here. Okay. Uh, yeah. And it is uh, serpentine. It takes. Uh, you know, it curves this way and then like a hard left hand turn and then a hard right hand turn uh, moves forward. It curves in this direction that it is going to be very slow going through this room. Down a hallway or through the room? It's through, through a gallery. Room. Yeah, through oh. this this narrow gallery. But I bet it avoids the traps. I was going to say, looking looking at the floor, does it seem like they're doing that because if they stepped on this over there, would I see, do I see traps or? Could uh, I... Go ahead and roll that as a, uh, as a perception. It's a. 21. 
So 2031. as 2031, yeah. <laughs> 2031, 2000, and um, that you would think that if you stepped off this path, that they have enough knowledge of stone that you think you're looking at because the mortar isn't right around it, a uh, pressure plate. Okay. Uh, Let me uh, take point, and I will okay. um, follow that path as yeah, they follow in his footsteps. So okay. like, <laughs> do what I do exactly, and I, I step exactly where I see their footprints before. So everyone make a dexterity roll just to go through because it's more Ixoa wide than it is human being wide. A dexterity deck. saving throw? Um, well, let yeah, me think about that. Or I, I guess I, you want like acrobatics or athletics. My, my, my brain, yeah, went to um, uh, how I used to game with it, with advanced. Um, yeah, the, the backwards roll under your dexterity crap. Right, yeah, exactly. You have the, the dex to do that. So what would work best for that? Because I want to make sure that you guys can maintain your balance walking through here. Acrobatics. Uh, acrobatics. Or a dexterity sense. saving throw. Yeah, so yeah, dexterity Which is the one you throw. should be pushing for because then you'd both get a plus four. Yeah. No, I only oh, have from a plus. you as well? Yeah. From you? And then plus us? Yeah. Yeah, let's additional... do that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it works? Yeah, that if you're within 10 feet of me, you add my, my charisma bonus to your saving oh. throws. So it's... And you're in the middle right now, so they I'm are. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right, so... Oh. 16. And? 22. 18. Yes, you all do. Uh, you get to the far end of this, um, and uh, you know, if there were traps there, you're, 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 they feel there were. It seemed very, very strange otherwise. But it doesn't seem as though actually fake traps to get us to just look stupid, <laughs> Maybe, or to to slow people down. We're on Ixoa, uh, <laughs> America's funniest home video. No, no, no one rolled an insight to see if I was lying to you guys. <laughs> it's just David messing with us. <laughs> the Ixoa are looking at us on security feed, like, what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> Why is the one in the back flapping her arms while she's going? <laughs> <laughs> it's just her way. Then and. One of my things, there it goes. Uh, then as you go around that, you, it's again a hard turn to the right-hand side, and it's a fairly long hallway that comes out of that, about 10 feet wide. And you can see at the far end of this hallway, there's a different gallery space. Um, look, at there's niches in the walls up ahead of you, mm. like it could have had statues flanking it. That's interesting, but there's no statues there now. Uh, there's no statues there right now. Um, all right, so check for traps. Jacob, going. got more traps? Yep. Oh my gosh, I am rolling like a thing today. Um, <laughs> perception, thirty-five. Um, yeah. So you feel very secure that with this, that not a narrow hallway, but that you could just walk down this with impunity and not have a trap. Okay, so I walk down with impunity. I'm and, impunity. Uh, keeping you know, aware that we're moving through hostile space, head on swivel. All right, so you get to the far end of that to this next room, and almost immediately you can see that there are small foes that raise up, and they are holding bows, and they are getting ready to shoot. Are they holding them small properly? Foes? They are holding them bow. They're holding them properly. So <laughs> everyone roll an initiative. Nice. Aw. Dang, well, about time to roll load. I've been rolling too high, apparently. The game is checking me. 19. 15. Okay. 19. Nine. And you're Thanks. up front. You said 15, Zoe? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So, Boris, you're up first. Oh, I move to engage nearest foe. All right. So, that would be at the end of your, you could have your attack at the end of your uh, 20 foot movement to get to them. Great. Yeah. Taking attack action. First attack is. That's a uh, plus. Uh, that's a, uh, sorry, uh, 23 to hit. Uh, yeah, definitely hits. Uh, I don't think I'm going to spend smiting on Kubo or Ixoa. <laughs> Um, 11 points of damage. Yeah, so you hit him, and he wakes up next week. <laughs> In <laughs> heaven. <laughs> yeah, so he just went, you know, snapped him backward. Is there another one within 10 feet? Uh, there is another one within 10 feet. Uh, I use the rest of my move to move to that one, and then hit him. Got it. Uh, have a 26 versus armor class. And that hits him. Nice. For 12 points of damage. And same thing. He hits, and again, you're not taking the time like to watch it happens to them, but you can just tell by the feel of it <laughs> that um, their life essence the very left their body. The crumple of a head coming apart. That they seemed like very, very it small. It cut through so clean, you're not even sure you actually made contact. You're like, where'd he go? And he's just like on the end of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, they only weigh like eight pounds. I probably wouldn't notice too much. Yeah, right. Uh, Zelen at 15. No, I used to go in there. <laughs> um, I don't know what to do yet. 
Well, but you better figure out because you're right, you're the one. It's Use your a turn, cantrip, kill a so thing. You, you, yeah, there you go. You. Cantrips, because these, as you've seen, how much damage did you do to them? Uh, eleven and twelve. Very little damage it takes to kill these things. You could probably wipe out a few. Okay, I'm going to cast burning hands. I hold my hands with thumbs touching and fingers spread. Yep. A thin sheet of flame shoot forth. I'm going to aim it so as to miss Boris, but as to hit as many of them as I ha- as I can. It's a 15 foot cone. So you're trying to hit the one that's like nearest to Boris because no, there was and- like three together, two off to the right, and then um, or one off to the right, and then two more off to the left. I want to I want to capture as many as I can without hitting Boris I, in that. I cone. think the two that are so off the, to the two one off side. To the, yeah, two and off to either side no da- is what I do. Two off to the left. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah and that's just a. Uh, is that a range spell attack? It's a dexterity attack? saving okay. throw. So you, you take five steps forward to make sure that you can, because it's a 15-foot cone and they're 20 feet away? Yeah. So. Wow. And they take 16 points of damage or half if they make their dexterity. Uh, yeah, one rolled a 17 on his dex save. Oh, yeah, they are little tiny things. They're probably pretty dexterous. And uh, 12. So uh, what are your damages? 16 or half if they make their... Okay, 16s and 8s, got it. All right. Um, and the here. dexterity save is a 17. Oh, wow. That other guy just barely made it. Yeah. Dude, dude, dude. That still worked. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What, you, what, say the damages again. 16. 16. And half and if they eight. pass. Okay, so yeah, one dies, and the other one... Wishes he Wishes <laughs> <laughs> that he had died, because he's looking really, really bad. Um, all right, so Zellin's done. Oblige. Uh At uh, 13. Um, Dang it. A boke, an arrow comes from one of the guys. We're still armed that way. Did you How see a boke? Uh, 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 an arrow from a bow. A um, boke arrow. Uh, that was like the whole bow. I, I asked if they were yeah. holding him right. Oh, I was <laughs> kidding. <laughs> he throws it like yeah, a Technically, spear. throwing my bow does not much, yeah, does much damage. Yeah, that's, that's just Throwing crazy your hitting with too. a bow does a uh, How many hostiles are still alive? Um, Three. There's... Um, one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. So one, three, one is very burning. adjacent to you, right? Um, and arrow misses, goes wide. Was like aiming for Zelen. Um, and then the foe that is right next to you, Boris. I can teach you how to not suck with a bow and arrow. Just put it down. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up. All and try you have to do is else. surrender. Um, no, that was me just insulting them. I can teach you how to not to suck. Just don't hold it. Just don't have that in your hands. He rolls a 21 on his attack against Boris. Oh, wow. Good for him. Yeah. So, yeah. Is, it, is this the guy that was already injured? Uh, no. Oh. Um, and delivers six points of damage. Taken. Are you going to do the thing? No, I'm not no. wasting a spell slot when there's a dragon in the area. Fair. And then... Well, I'm kind of surprised you used one. I, I would have gone with a cantrip. But yeah, well, we were, you we almost were, took out two, so yeah, solid. We were thinking about her cantrips, and it was like uh, Burning Hands and Thorn Whip. They did 1d6 or 1d8. Which... Mm, produce Flame or Thorn Whip, yeah. Yeah. All right, and then the one that was off to the right-hand side that has not been engaged, uh, he steps forward, and he's attacking you, Boris. Okay. Uh, and 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, he hits you. Wow. That seems statistically unlikely. What a brave unlikely. little thing. And also delivers six points of damage. Okay. And I'll make sure I'll make sure I'll, this guy's have multi attack. Uh, he does not. So just that. Oh one. darn! Your kobolds are just uh, what are they called? An an Ixoa. Uh, Ixoa. Yeah. Um, and then from way over on the like actually behind you, oh. there is casting that happens also oh. at thirteen. And let's see how this is being split up. Probably at Boris would be the most likely because you've downed a couple of foes or it's Zelen. So we'll roll this on it. <laughs> I'm not a threat because I've done nothing. <laughs> you've done nothing whatsoever. Um, and that would be a one, two, three. So yes, targeting Boris. All right, this is a range spell attack. So again, armor class and the plus on that one. Eight. So you can tell that the spell... Uh, scorching ray, Zelen is being cast. Gross. Um, hey, Boris, scorching and... ray is being cast. Wait, <laughs> am I supposed to do something? <laughs> Why am I... No, he's no. just telling you to make you stress. Oh, he's, it's working. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know you're a magic. You're a spell. I rolled caster. a twenty. Oh, ah. Yeah. <laughs> you're a spellcaster. You missed just, by one. You're cursed with knowledge. You know this is <laughs> happening. You can't do anything to stop it. You just know it's happening. 19 natural. Um, 
Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, multiple three. Uh, let's see. Scorching Ray. I have to go back to that one. That's going to be 2d6 fire damage. It's a good thing you have absorb elements, right? Um, and it's <laughs> five, five points of damage uh, from its Scorching Ray. Now it's given its Wait, position away. It? So it's behind us. It's behind you, and it's in like a little gallery position that is like built into the wall. It's up high back to the left. So not anywhere near it, where these guys is are. Is it a, it's a, it's a it's, Ixoa, it's but it's another a Ixoa, spell but it's spell casted, exactly. Okay, that's all of my guys at 13, Jacob at nine. Who gives you the right? <laughs> <laughs> I turn and fire on the only guy what that's done considerable attempts at damage. So the spell caster back if, in the Yeah, finish, if I have line of sight on him, do you I? You do. Yeah, yeah, you definitely do. How far away is it from us? Uh, 45 feet. 18? Um, hits. All right. And 15 points of damage. Uh, taken. Taken? Taken. Oh. I use my bonus action and cast Hunter's Mark. <laughs> and I fire at him again. And with advantage. Uh, 23. Uh, that hits. Now he's below his hit point maximum. Yes. And I have advantage on the attack. Through this guy. And Hunter's Mark. I don't have a d6. Hey. Oh, it's already here. Thank you. <laughs> I already have both my D6s. I shall help you with that. All right. 10, uh, 11, uh, 22, 28 points of damage. 28. Would have been the right number exactly plus one had he been not injured at all. With that, he is extra dead. God, that was circuitous. He better <laughs> <than this. laughs> That right. would have been great, except for a thing, but it's actually a thing, so it's <laughs> Great. Illuminati <laughs> confirmed. So there are... Uh, was the point to do psychic damage? Because I've taken psychic damage. All right, yes, that was the point. So again, we're back down to having three foes. The one that's been burned very badly over to the left of the party. Um, there is a guy right in front of Boris, um, who was one of those original three that had the bows. And then this one was off to the... the those are the left, the first one. And then to the right, this one that stepped up and did like five points of damage. I'm not sure what these, this non-Euclidean geometry is. We've got three hostiles. Yes. <laughs> I hit the nearest hostile. Okay, roll it. Uh, that's a 19 versus armor class. Hits. And I do. Yeah, good. Max for 17 points of bludgeoning. Yeah, that definitely. Is there a foe within 30 feet? Uh, yes, there is. I moved to that foe and hit him with a, with a stick. That's a half step, yeah. And that was that one that came in last from the 16 right. 16 versus armor class. And that hits him exactly. Nice. Good armor class in these little guys. Yeah, they are. One off of Max for 16 points of damage. Uh, and he takes that in a way that looks a little more like shrugging it off where these other guys were just pasted. Finally. <laughs> You. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, he's referencing uh, Conan the Barbarian. Oh. That when Conan breaches the inner sanctum, um, one of the lieutenants of Thalsa Doom recognizes Conan and goes, you, and then gets smushed with a pillar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was Borson. Now, Zellin, you're up. We have one that is undamaged right now, right? Uh, no, everyone's been damaged. There's Everybody's the, been there's damaged. There's the, okay. the foe you burned and the one that Boris is currently engaged yeah, with. Now, now your cantrip should do fine. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. Um, so I'm going to uh, produce flame and throw it at the one I burned. Sorry, that's kind of rude, but... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're seeing like you might hurt a lot. Fire on fire, I'm sure it hurts an awful lot, but sorry. sorry. I'm not sure. So, is that, the is that a ranged spell attack you're willing to it's, hit? It's a... Um, yeah. Your, um, whatever your attack modifier is. And also, uh, I can roll at 30 feet, make a ranged yeah. spell attack yep. on a yeah. hit. The so, target takes 1d8. I wonder uh, why my be, thing says 2d8. Because it's, because your 10th level, it's 2d8. Oh. Because oh. you can't roll go up hit. with level. 20 cider. Well, there you go. You got to start it with that. <clears throat> I know that. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. 14. Plus. Uh, well, that's your. Yeah, plus, plus. What do plus I like, get plus? Your spell plus your spell attack. Be like oh, that's seven, seven or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So twenty-one. Yeah, definitely hits. Yeah, that that now, plus seven is very important. <laughs> now two d eight, both of those do big damage. Four to four. Uh, eight. Yeah, he had one. <laughs> he had nine originally. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so he had just enough time to recover and go like, ah, and then, boom. oh, you did. W yeah. Okay. So when when he, he's the one that made his dexterity save. Yeah. And which saved him with one hit point. Right. There you go. You just you're just cleaning up after yourself. That's yeah. all you're doing. Yeah. All but right. That's it for me. And then so there's only one foe right now. He's engaged with Boris, and he is attacking. As a free action, I say, don't do it. You're smarter than this. <laughs> yeah, really. You have your whole life ahead of you. 
It might only be six seconds if you don't stop what you're doing. Not even six seconds, because I go in how many like second like moments? Mm, one or two. One yeah, or two about seconds. Like that, yeah. So uh, attacking Boris, he is not backing down. Never give it. Uh, Never rolls give it. a nineteen. <laughs> it would have been a great hit against most foes. And Boris, you're very aware the guy's actually pretty good. You know, considering his size and everything else. Good but for him. He's I, gonna be very flat in just a second. Okay. Um <laughs> that's all of my guys at thirteen. Um Jacob at nine. Ooh, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> little spaz thing happened I thought you got there. a splinter or something like that the way that you pulled your hands off the table I was very curious alright I am going to attempt to kill dude so are you uh, shooting into combat here you're you're still close to this or I guess you are still about um, what I'd say originally like uh, 15 20, 25 or so feet yeah, away yeah so not far enough away to yeah. where like anything's gonna interfere with my shot right before that roll, okay. <laughs> he was still rolling, hadn't stopped moving. Bonus and he action, it. swapping my quarry over just, just, just to okay, make sure he remembered that. Just extra n- dead. Nick and night. Uh, seventeen hits. Nice. He rolled a four. <laughs> rolled a, rolled four. a four naturally. It's a... oh, nice. Let's see uh, that plus that, and no other reasons. I don't need advantage on the same sneak throw. Attack. Sneak attack because I have an ally within five feet. Right. In your D six for me. I do seventy three points of damage. Close, 71, uh, 5, 10, 15, 21 points of damage. Uh, he takes it. <gasps> Son of a... Oh, yeah. How right. do these little ones get so strong? Some of them are like blips. Steroids. Yeah, right? Oh. I think the in-universe term is magic. Thank you. <laughs> right. All right, I forgot to roll a die, but I'll, I'll do that next time. Uh, right, doing it again. Uh, 20, unnatural. Hits. Cool. 16 points of damage. And he drops. Good. <sighs> Should have listened. I hey, gave you an out. Roll the damage you would have rolled for that other die. That was just one more D8 just, that I was missing. So another five. Uh, he still would have been alive. Okay, good. Yeah. So they're all dead? Uh, there are no foes left in this room. So quick question, just technicality. So on this thing that I use, it says produce flame under the hit slash DC. It's plus 11. Does that does that mean I get a plus eleven on my rolls to hit things? Yes. Nice. Oh, I so only... yeah. So like it's oh, because it's a spell attack. Four from your proficiency bonus, five from uh, your wisdom modifier, two from the staff. Got it. Dang. So my spell attack modifier is a plus eleven. Jeez. I thought it was plus seven. I wonder why. I thought that's that. your basic one. That's your um. Oh. Your... Probably your strength one, or maybe your dex one. Yeah. 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 So you just got that much more dangerous in a heartbeat. Yeah. Better to found out right now. Yeah. yeah, better now than fighting the dragon. Yeah, yeah uh, so. not taking too much time to do so, not worrying about getting the arrows back. I'll just take the ones that I fired and just snapping the ends off them to save the owl feathers. Okay. And just... Do we um, do we want to cast Where is the Dragon spell? Because... No. Mine doesn't give me a location. Just it's just, it's just going to remind us that there's no, a dragon it's nearby. going to keep... We're going to find it. All right. I'm confident well, maybe we'll we find can, it. Maybe we can just find the leaves and get back out again and not find it at all. That'd be great. Then we have a dragon behind us, and we stole from it. Well, good thing dragons aren't vindictive or anything. Maybe. Or greedy, or jealous, or vain. See, <laughs> like, honestly, if a dragon were any other creature, I might be worried. All right. Are you All right. Ready? So yes. Yeah, so then, leaving that space or the uh, the the door that just passed where they were, uh, you can see that there is where you've never quite lost daylight, ambient light, um, because of just the way this is built. They have little like holes through the ceilings that allow light to come in that you can tell there's a lot of daylight up ahead. You must be going to a portion of this, you know, demolition where there's uh, no ceiling uh, very, very soon. If you go, if you continue All right, through. Does that, does that put us in any extra danger? Because we um, could do long strider and go through it fast. Just keep moving. All right, let's like, go. Like not even waste the time to cast spells. Let's just keep moving. Go right. for it. So you, uh, you around a corner and then it opens into what? Like an inner garden like area. And uh, this area is about uh, 60 feet by 60 feet, so it's decent sized. Uh, there is some rubble, but there's also plants still growing in here, maybe even cultivated. Uh, just inside the, uh, the doorway to either side, there are two statues 
of Shoot. of people like you know like a man and a woman as you can see on the far side of this gallery area this gallery this this garden area uh before you go back in there are two statues over there so they're adorning you know both walls should we just attack the statues because you know they're going to come to life and attack <laughs> us should we just blow them up <laughs> or we blunt our weapons <laughs> you, just keep moving i was gonna say uh, um oh, if, if you're really worried about it we can we can take a three second pause for you to get to detect magic going as we continue to run through this place yeah let's do that all right Ping! detect magic is going now are these um, statues magical? That's 30 feet. Uh, no. All right. Let's All right, keep running. Let's keep going. Okay. So as you go through there, you can... still has it going the whole time too, in case we pass anything magical. Yeah, for that's the next right. 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you never cast anything that broke your concentration. You've still got it going from the first time. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm going to decastify that. Decastify. <laughs> well, too late. <laughs> no, it's not. You know, if she, if she never broke her concentration. <laughs> I know. It's still Wait, did there. you take damage? Uh-uh. No. Yeah. So we're good. <laughs> And also, when she whips out a colloquialism like decastify, you can't, you can't know. penalize it's like, anyone it's so like good. that. It just sounds so good. All right. So we're walking into the garden area? Yeah. So it sounds like fairly quickly, you're kind of breezing through that garden area. Um, you, you... Do, it, do the plants feel natural to me here? Do I feel like they've also been charmed by whatever is being charmed outside? Um, yeah. It actually feels like if this, it's a controlled space in some sort that, mm, um, that it doesn't seem to be affected the same way uh, or it's being managed so it's not uh, you know overgrowth that way interesting no. so we're just kind of booming through it yeah that's what you guys had said yep. and through the other side it looks like there was some pretty major damage done to the original building and it looks like you're looking into the shaft of one of those those rents that uh. were described maybe not one of those exact ones but it's definitely a case of where there's cavern that goes down through this that originally this this manor was built over this and then whatever happened that you know shifted ground uh just dropped sections of the uh the manor through it and maybe it's been rebuilt in order to like you know house this area you know kids keep the water the elements out of it but it's definitely a really really big opening that's descending now it's quite clear too that built around the periphery of this rift uh there are stairs that have been built in to go down? To go down. Uh, like you're skirting it. Like it goes down like like 30 feet and then you're off into the darkness. You know, Boris could see much further. Uh, some areas where it's wooden, but an awful lot of it looks as though it's being either done or redone in stone. A significant amount of stone to make this stone. Oh, away. maybe I, this is where they're taking the stones. I do not have words enough to express how against the idea I am of going back underground. Underground again. <laughs> <laughs> we again. Just got out. Do we? Um. Do we hear a dragon moving around down there? Rule, per, rule of perception. <laughs> We're probably hearing a lot of fights going for around there. I I, I hear dragon walking. Mp3 just yeah right playing uh, echoing uh, the walls. 22. What are nice. we holding? Perceptions? Perceptions. Yeah, so. And in 18 for Usud. 25. Um, yeah, you probably would have heard uh, one of the Exoas somewhere above you or out beyond the wall uh, go and fart <laughs> with those rolls, but nothing from <laughs> nothing from down below. Can you see anything down there? I mean, how far can you see? 120? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, stairs to spring into darkness, but boards from up here, you can see there's some kind of artwork along the walls as you're descending this area that seems to be carved into the stone. Oh, I guess we're going down the is stairs. There, is there a light down there? No. Then I will take a moment and cast uh, Dark Vision on uh, myself and Zelen. Thank you. And that gives All you right. a 60-foot range? Um, yes. Okay. I think I think it's just whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out to a range of 60 feet. I'm and going so, to send Jast to start flying ahead, and then I think we just start going down the stairs. I mean, okay, maybe she can give form, us, yeah. yeah, maybe she can give us a warning, a little warning if something ahead of us, but I think we just got to get start going down the stairs. As you begin your descent, uh, the wall on your right-hand side was natural stone. Uh, the stone stair that's right here has been built to it, and there's some of the put rods that would have been like uh, wooden beams that went into either natural cracks or something else uh, that we used for construction. So it does look like this is a much more recent build. If you want to do your, your stone knowledge, Boris, you could certainly do Still that. Still the charisma one? I was, um, yeah, charisma based. I was immediately thrown onto my toes because like as soon as you started talking, you went into like this narration kind of voice. It's yeah. like something's about to happen. <laughs> but then I remembered like you you pre-write all your little introductions area. So I knew you're just reading off of a page. When you, as you start your descent, 
the way. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> we're if in the, a volcano. If the stairs drop out from under us, and we're back in Chitak frickin' dead. <laughs> I am going to kill every bug I see until I come out as an oath of conquest. But to say you, you land in some kind of gooky stuff and you spring up, you realize it's the giant gibbering, gibbering mouth oh, with the murmuring no, sea. That'd be horrible. And Chitak is like, oh no. I don't like you conceptualizing things right, so like this. So <laughs> Boris, what did you uh, roll? Twenty-four. Oh yeah, most definitely. This is new construction stone up here. You would seduced think, the hell out of that stone. Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so you got, uh, you You're get the a idea. nice rock. Tell me your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> and it gave everything up. Um, so you know this has been recent stonework, reasonable stonework, but nowhere near the stuff you would expect from uh, a Kremlin okay. um, uh, hold. Now, on the right-hand wall, you can see almost immediately there is... By the right-hand wall, do you mean the wall? Because it sounds like the other side is just down. Yeah, just space. <laughs> it's just void that drops into nothingness. So yeah, the wall on the right, there, everything's like, you know, tied into. There is an initial carving of a, a, a dragon, obviously, facing you, its own body coiled around it, looking at you. It's the first thing you're seeing. And as you step one step down, you can start to see what looks like a process of this dragon coming to the area as you come down below to that. Oh, it's like the dragon's history? Um, and it does start to, to, to play out that way. And then after about... Or maybe the uh, Ixo is worship of it? Yeah. He, and that's that's exactly right. You get down about 20 feet down this this portion of stair, and you can see that suddenly the Ixo are there. That The, the dragon mm -hmm. seemed to have predated it, and it lived in this and drew the hill up out of the ground. Um, everything that they would probably think would be you know, where it came from, how it was there. And then it delineates uh, them being there, apparently modified, being taught by this thing. And you're at a platform, you know, you turn the corner, you're going down again. Uh, and then there's more of this thing, uh, almost like glowing by the lines that are coming off of it, uh, them bowing down in worship. And this story narrates and goes, and the further down you go, the uh, Ixoa look to be the same, and the dragon always looks larger and larger and larger as it, go, as it grows. Uh, there are buildings around it, castles, structures, and then there's no buildings, there's no castles, there's no structures. Uh, and you do go through something of uh, like, a, like an embossed or an engraved history of this dragon as it, as it had lived its life through this area. Is there any writing? Uh, not as such at this point. But uh, you finally get to a spot where you touch down and there's a where the gallery had ended right there. You can see that you're crossing a short area of like stone tunnel and then the rift descends through another area. And in there, it's more wooden, the uh, the the stairs and things going further down. But in that connecting passageway, there is carved writing into the walls that runs on both sides. It goes way higher than one of these Ixoa could reach. Um, but, but it seems to be in some kind of an unusual, almost like, you know, cuneiform, just like, like geometric shapes making, uh, letters and, or numbers. What's in that say? passage? <laughs> yeah, what's, right. say? what's this writing that I can read say? <laughs> so as you begin to read it and I wouldn't, you know, go through the whole thing, it would probably mm -hmm. take like, you know, hours to go just through and read the whole thing. Just kind of skimming as we're walking through. And as yeah. you're reading through this and you skim like down toward, it seems Boris as though it isn't a prayer that stops upper, the, the writing is upper left to lower right, mm -hmm. that is all running toward the middle of both of these walls. Oh, like the way the dragon was shaped up yeah, at that Yeah, around mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. yeah, exactly so. And you get down toward the middle of this and it says, as Tari the Huntress of the Green. And that's the very, very middle of it. And it was the middle of the other side that it was, it was communicated as you went through this prayer that would be a long time going through the whole thing. And that's where it had read, God is mother of the people. So those two like largest words are opposite each other on the same, you know, one hall to the other one, right in the middle of both these sides. Religiously, you know, it's a religious yeah, text. Sure. It's like, right. you know, yeah. their Bible made into a wall. And then again, through that tunnel, then the stairs down from here are all wood as they would continue to descend. Okay, because they haven't gotten to this then. Yeah. Right, right, oh. right, right. Yeah. Be they on our guard. They haven't <laughs> fixed up this part of the temple. Is that what you mean? Or they haven't fixed up this part of the area? Well, they, they haven't taken the stone down from the manor above to replace these stairs yet. Got it. It would seem that way. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah at, a, at a cursory glance, they seem like they could withstand the weight of an adult human male wearing plate. Um, yes, uh, they bug do. Bug plate? Or bug? Bug, bug wearing bug, bug? Right. Uh, what it actually looks like, it looks as though they have enough knowledge of stonework that they've built it to actually make stone arches 
uh, and you have to have strong stonework to make that, you know, that keystone for it to wedge into place. Yeah. Uh, and then these have planking over the top of that to take it, you know, to, to let people walk up and down through this. So it's um, very sturdy. They're just in the process of upgrading. As you get to this part of the rift, it's it becomes very, very lit. There's all kinds of light coming from above. You look up and you can see trees that are like sticking out from you know, the edge of the rift. So this is a spot where... If this thing wanted to fly down it's through. Like, is this wide enough the dragon could fly through here? Yes. Nice. Oh boy. Yeah, most definitely. Um, continue to descend. No reason to... to bottom. Yeah. No turning back now. All right. Eyes on swivel. Be on guard. Eyes on swivel. Head on. <laughs> um, <laughs> Head on neck. Eyes on swivel. <laughs> you get to the bottom of these stairs. I'm saying that because I'm manifesting where I want to keep it. <laughs> and there's a large cave area opening up before you. And almost immediately inside it, there is a fair amount of wealth just broadcast on the floors. Um, coins, gems, jewels, things like that. Uh, and still uh, a good 100 feet away from where you are, there is a large coiled thing. And it says, welcome, come forward into my home. Thanks, Daniel, for keeping up with the podcast. Be like Daniel and post a review wherever you listen to it. On a more serious note, send us a fiver at uh, subscribestar.com slash v-empires-edge so we can pay for our imminent funeral expenses.